Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. This week's material is on business writing, the business writing process, but also in this week too, we talk about how to get a job, retain it, some etiquette techniques for communicating in the workplace. So let's move through this chapter together. I don't take, think it'll take very long. Of course, we're moving towards the end of the semester, so lectures might be a little shorter, but we also have some different work that we'll be doing here pretty soon. One example, of course, you just finished is your paper and presentation. So your learning objectives for this week's uh, chapter, chapter 13, which starts on page 453, is to explain why preparation in business writing is important. And I think that to be the most important part, preparing for what you're writing, thinking about it critically, which is the next piece, overcoming some common fears, you know, and also some of the other things that are mentioned is demonstrating how to write for skimming and analytical reading. Um, you know, bullet points are a key part of that, and we'll talk about that in the future. Uh, and then demonstrating your ability to paraphrase one or more written assignments. So being able to write quickly in a lot of amount of time. So business writing is how to make it sound professional, how to write quickly, and how to communicate with your peers in a way that they understand. We're not going to go through the rest of the objectives. You'll get them um, through your own reading, and then we'll also talk about them within the chapter here coming up. So how to prepare to write. Making sure you're preparing when it's most productive. I usually, you now we're moving on in your uh, page number if you're following along in your book to 454. You know, I usually get a closed space where I can concentrate on things. And, uh, you know, it's usually my office. I shut the door. I think about what I'm going to do in regards to what I'm going to write about, make sure I'm in the right mood. That, that's kind of not true. You, you know, you, get, you don't have to be in the right mood. It just illustrates, you know, when you're at work, you're doing work kind of kind of things and you're thinking about things critically but you have the background to write what you need to write or sometimes an investigative process to understand you know sometimes I'll reach out to someone in finance as an example to say I, I don't understand these numbers can you help explain them so before I write an email I get the information needed to present things in an accurate way so I think critically as well so moving into thinking critically I'm self-directed self-disciplined I've self-monitored and I'm thinking by doing these different things. I establish standards and attention to their use. I problem solve. Um, and I do um, writing in a way that makes sense for me. And my effort and my persistence in my writing over time has helped me develop skills that I need to think critically and quickly on the job. In regards to fear of writing, you know, if you have a fear of writing at work, you know, sometimes this can be a fear of people thinking that your writing is not as effective as it should be or maybe it's a fear of writing to your boss or your supervisor because uh, you're, you're fearing um, that they might think that you're not performing in a way that you should or you don't know what you should you know that risk of failure that this illustrates or a negative orientation is another thing that we just talked about you know those those fears need to be over overcome because if you if you have those fears you're not going to be able to write in a way that's fast and a lot of times on the workplace you need to communicate quickly and uh, having fear um, is not going to help with that. How do you overcome that fear? I want to talk about that really quickly. There's no really common way to overcome this fear. You have to have a supervisor or a boss that treats you with dignity and respect. I think that's the first thing that helps. And then also, over time, as you continue to write, things will get easier. So you'll get, uh, you'll, you'll be able to overcome things quicker. You'll be able to write faster. And, and uh, I think time is really the key answer here to overcoming this fear. So clear and concise business writing, moving on in, in the chapter, um, we are on page 459. Uh, so uh, really interesting because I've just read a book about Benjamin Franklin, but uh, on the paragraph, um, the fourth paragraph here, it says, ever since Benjamin Franklin said that time is money, business managers have placed high value on getting work done quickly, right? Clear and concise business writing. Um, so presenting an executive summary. How do you do this? So you want to paraphrase things in a way that the business orientation understands. And you think about this from the perspective of your work when you're running your research paper, we had an abstract. So every email should be an abstract. You don't want to go into so much detail that bores people so they don't read your work. Understanding your work is essential. You want to have everything in there that's necessary. However, you don't want a three-page email sent unless it's something from an HR perspective that you have to have everything documented. So bullet points are a good way to do this. Uh, this talks about boldface headings, signposts, 
uh, within each section, make sure each paragraph with the topics in it indicates that paragraph and what it discusses. So, you know, just being broad in your discussion, giving an overview, you know, really making ways for it to be seen uh, so it's easy uh, and clear to understand. I find there's a lot of different examples of how to write in business style, and um, it's it's really easy to do once you get the hang of it. I, I use a lot of bullet points or signposts, and I think that's the easiest way. Uh, plagiarizing, you know, you want to make sure you give credit to your sources. If you don't do the work to gather the information at work and you use that information rather than uh, giving people the credit where credit's due, you know, that's considered plagiarizing and people are not going to be happy about that. So, you know, you want to give people credit. You don't have to citation like APA style and business writing. That, that's not necessary. However, you want to make sure you have maybe um, a parenthesis at the end that indicates where you gather the information from or maybe information at the bottom of your email which says where you pulled the data from. We're not going to go into a lot of detail on this. You guys know about it from your writing process that we just went through. So when you compile your research, make sure you use the steps that are listed here. So make sure it has sensitivity, exposure, assimilation, incubation, incorporation, production, and revision. You know, those are all the things that you want to keep um, in, in the back of your head when you're writing, when you compile your information. But revision, to me, is the most important part of that because... You know, once you write your email, you want to take time to revise it and make it better so it sounds sounds good and it makes sense. On page 468 and 469, uh, the biggest thing that I want to highlight, like I just said, is revision. Revision is a process by which you, you look over your document again in order to correct or improve your message. You will notice elements that need further investigation, development, or additional examples and visual aids to produce your document. Now, we're going through all this, and you're like, my goodness, it's going to take me forever just to write a stinking email. Yes, at first. However, this all happens quickly. As you start to develop yourself, you're going to be able to write really fast, and it's not going to be something that you think about when you're writing. You're not going to think, i got to do sensitivity. i got to have exposure. i got to have assimilation. And that's just going to come naturally. So don't take this as step-by-step -step, uh, what you have to do when you're writing. It's just a process approach. Uh, and also, if, if you went through this step by step every time you wrote an email, you wouldn't get any work done and things wouldn't go in the right direction. So this is just think this is this is how you should process all in one very quick span of time. Uh, outlines. We talked about this a little bit. Um, you want to make sure that you have purpose statements, general thesis statements, organizing principles. Um, and this is not just an email. We've talked mostly about emails, but maybe you have an executive presentation or you have an executive outline uh, for a board or the CEO. You know, a lot of these things are effective when you're given an overview from that regard. So you can take a look at this in your book as well. This is on page 471. Um, ethos, just so you're aware, uh, some people might wonder what this is. Ethos is, is uh, your credibility. Um, it comes from your sources, your logos or logic or your thoughts are represented across the document. Uh, and finally, your pathos or passion or enthusiasm will be reflected in your design and how you present your information if you're able to. You know, you want to write in a logical way. It follows the rules. It's easy to read. It attracts a reader. It's not too excessive, right? It's clear and concise. Um, logic, you know, this is the rhetoric, the art of presenting an argument. Sometimes it's not an argument, right? Maybe it's just information. Um, you know, you have strategies in which you do this, so keep that in mind as well. Clarity, credibility, tone. You know, even writing has a tone, right? If you have a condescending tone in your writing, that's not usually taken very well. So write in a way to help people understand uh, that it's meant to benefit others rather than, you know, coming across as someone that's rude or uncredible. The three common styles, casual, formal writing, we could talk about that from an expression of how you're writing, uh, but the type of style depends on your audience, whether or not your communication um, is going to be external or internal, and an internal means maybe within your organization or the purpose of your document. Your tone, we've already talked about this, making sure you have informal versus formal. I would stick to the formal side of things, however, at times, you know, even at work, it's important to communicate in a way that people understand. So if it's not coming across the way you explain it, and a lot of times this is rhetoric that might be very detailed from, you know, if we're talking about healthcare, maybe you're, you're 
your information that you're presenting is is challenging for people to understand because you're speaking more healthcare terminology, and sometimes we have to tone that down a little bit. So when you prove your point, let's move on to this section. Got a little background info there. Um, I'm not sure what happened with the computer speaker, but proving your point, you have different sections of that that you can look at. We're not going to go over this uh, in an extensive amount because it's really more you know, really deep down into how you write. Um, but you know, your claim, your data, your warrant, you can take a look at that. It's not going to be a test question. However, it could be on homework. So luckily that's open book and you have the information in front of you. All right, we're moving on to writing and liability. So choose words that can be easily referenced or understood. We talked about that from healthcare terminology's perspective. The, the rules governing words, some words mean different things in different language, languages, so make sure you understand that. Promote understanding and limit misinterpretation. So you don't want people to think that you said something that might not be what you expected them to understand. So writing in a way that's very direct. Direct writing is the most effective writing. Um, so tips, pay attention to the details, understand the target meaning, consider the nonverbal aspect of the message, and review, reflect. And the review part is the most important from my perspective. All right, let's move on. And I want to get on to um, pass these exercises, which you can do if you're interested. And there's a lot of different exercises from an individual's perspective or even a class perspective that you can look at and uh, share um, experiences. So, you know, one, one idea could be, you know, moving back into 13.5, uh, choose a topic related to a career that interests you and, and think about how that research topic is on the internet, set a timer 15 minutes, and at the end of the 15 minutes, review your sources and what you have, your information, could you do better next time, where you gather your information. So it's like data seeking that we've already done in our research project. So there's some cool exercises in here that might be helpful for all of you. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, before we get rid of uh, this chapter, effective sentences on four, page 479. It's not really something that's in um, the PowerPoint, but remember when we're talking about sentences, the sentence structure. So declarative, imperative, interrogative, exclamatory, uh, all those things that you learned in English 101, uh, that's going to be important for you to know from the perspective of homework. And declarative sentence is, um, you know, how, how it's written is you are invited to join us for lunch. An imperative sentence is please join us for lunch. An inter interrogative sentence would be would you like to join us for lunch? And an exclamatory sentence would be I'm so glad you could join us for lunch. So um, take a look at that. Make sure you understand what those are. You know, it's a lot of it is English 101. Sometimes, you know, I don't really think about this when I'm writing, but you know, you've got to have that background if you're going to be an effective business writer. And those are on page 479 and 480. So take a look at that. And then also take a look at page 481, transitions. When you're transitioning sentences or transitioning topics within one business uh, writing process, uh, sometimes people can do that in a way that's very confusing. And you want to make sure your transitions from one section to another makes sense. So I've gotten really effective at this, especially in research writing. Um, but involve words or vis uh, visual devices that help the audience follow the author's ideas. So you want your audience to follow your ideas, understand what you're talking about, and understand how to go from one section to the next. That's really all I have for this chapter. You know, it ends uh, with a lot of different information that's not included here in the PowerPoint, but take the time to look at it on your own. Some of it is very, very broad. Some of it's pointed to from the perspective of, you know, key understandings of how to write. Sometimes you're not going to, uh, well, in general, you're not going to think about this when you're writing an email at work. However, it's kind of the background like we've talked about. It's something that if you learn now, over time, you'll improve on, you'll get better at. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks so much for listening to this 14-minute lecture, uh, and I look forward to learning more with you about how to communicate effectively in the next couple chapters.